Hi guys, welcome back. And in this video, we are going to talk about Specflow's living documentation. If you remember, a month before we were talking about Specflow's living documentation, which was released by the team, and we also discussed about the Specflow CLI tool, which is which will help you to generate the living documentation in a much sophisticated fashion. That's exactly what we'll be doing in this particular video, but we are going to see the new recent changes which the team has made and made it pretty close to like a not only like a living documentation but also you can use it like a test report like it will have your report with pass and fail result and it will also help you to do like a switch off toggle on uh, things where you can see the report with the uh, failures without the failures like a living documentation or also with a test report something like that so that's what we'll be seeing in this particular video like a full view like how you can use the specflows living documentation as a test report and you can integrate that with Azure. I mean, we're not gonna see the Azure integration in this video, but we are gonna see how you can actually generate a report with the test result, and you can do that offline within your machine. I mean, integrating in Azure, we'll be discussing later point of time, but in this video, we are gonna see the latest upgrade of Specflow's living documentation, as you can see over here. So if you remember in our earlier video, while we were discussing the Specflow living documentation is going to look like this with a report and it will have like a pass fail something like that like this kind of report and you can see that it will it will not give you a whole details like uh like a like a toggle to switch off or switch on the past failed report and also it won't be and there are some cosmetic changes which has been made in this particular uh, living documentation report where it will also help you uh, to see the steps more clearly for the failure uh, step definitions like why that particular step has been failed and stuff so that's even more realistic and also there are uh, there is no way that you can see the trend of the failures of this particular report uh, like uh, if this particular scenario like if this particular scenario has been failed for three releases or maybe four releases something like that if you remember that's exactly what you can do in the extends clove reporter as well so it's exactly the same idea over here so as i said with the latest update all you have to do is you need to update two things one is the cli tools so you need to update the specflow plus living doc cli tool so you can do that using this command so dot net tool uh, update hyphen hyphen global of specflow dot plus dot living doc dot cli so if you do that it will update your cli so if you remember in our earlier video we were installing this particular uh, living doc cli using the dot net tool install hyphen hyphen global specflow dot plus dot living doc dot cli but in this uh, uh, case we need to update because we will be using our older version so you can see that once we do that you tell that updated the version from 3.4.2 to the version 3.5.186 so this is the current latest version which the team has got and if you try to run the living doc of the featured data or json something like that you will get an error so even if you once you updated the living doc uh, plugin you get this kind of error so if you remember in our earlier video while we tried running the living doc with the uh, featured data or json file then it was working fine. I mean, it was generating a report for us, which is the report that you just saw earlier. But now you get this kind of error and it tells that you need to give these commands like feature folder, test assembly, feature data, uh, all those things. So what is these things? That's gonna be from the CLI. So if you see, once you update the CLI, there are three new commands being introduced this time. One is the test assembly, feature folder, and feature data. So you need to specify the uh, feature data, which is pretty much like how we did uh, in our earlier uh, uh, in our video, where we just specified the feature data or JSON file, but we didn't really specify that uh, feature data like explicitly, like living doc of the, the feature data or JSON file. But now you need to specify the test assembly explicitly, like which assembly that you are going to be executing. And then if you want to generate the test data, uh, test result along with this particular test assembly, you can also specify the feature data. So here there is something called as feature data. There is something called as test execution dot JSON file. So basically uh, the team has stopped using the feature data dot JSON file. They are using something called as test execution dot JSON file. That's when it maps with your assembly file. 
Uh, and then there is something called a feature folder which you can specify uh, to map your living documentation uh, feature file with the file system so that you can once you click that you will also navigate over there to that particular feature file and then you can modify that and save it i mean those things will be very helpful if you are working with azure uh, azure's plugin that i was talking about earlier so that's something which we need to talk in our other videos but but yes this is how you should be doing it so once you run this and you can see that the living documentation is a bit different this time i mean you have a background uh, which you can see that it, it's like a boxy thing right now and it will show you the pass and fail in the step level not just in the scenario level that was showing before uh, and also there is something called as analytics tab which is something we will see while we try to execute it today uh, and that's new as well and i think it's going to give you more uh, more detailed historical trends and like that so as i said these are the things which has been changed this time and you can see that there is something called as a living uh, demo living doc the header you can also change the title if you want to so those things are a bit nice thing i mean you can do all those things this time so i'm gonna jump all the way to my uh, visual studio so this is the same project which we are working in our LA video uh, and now if I go to the dependencies uh, like manage new get packages and if I go to the updates you can see that we installed only the uh, specflow in unit last time and specflow plus living doc plugin uh, that's it and then uh, we just use the Microsoft dotnet test.sdk to do all those things so if i now try to update so you can see that this is the latest version that we have 3.42 but the latest version which is released by the team is 3.5.186 so if i try to update you will get an error you can see that it tells you that there is a version conflict related with the uh, specflow in unit and this because the spec specflow unit actually using the specflow 3.4.3 not the latest version so we need to first update the specflow in unit uh so that it will update the spec flows dll file which has been used on that uh and you can see that i'm still getting an error because for some reason you need to uh, explicitly update uh, the spec flow as well uh, so you need to install the spec flow because i don't really have it so if i go to the spec flow and then if i try to install the spec flow this time so this is now 3.5.14 and now you can either update the uh, specflow in unit if you want to or you can directly install uh, or update the living documentation over here and it gives one more error this time it tells that specflow or tools dot ms build dot generation is missing so we need to install that as well so you know you remember right i mean specflow once you you install it because you need to generate the code behind file you need to have the specflow tools dot ms build dot generation as well so you need to install that uh, as well this time so i'm going to install that so you can see that it's like a breaking change i mean so many things have been changed this time i think the specflow team is trying to streamline uh, the process of specflow itself by the way uh, so once you update that you can see that there is no issue updating this time which is pretty cool and now if i try to build the solution you can see that the build got successfully uh, updated which is it's all pretty good right now and i see there is something like a spec flow and it requires spec flow so let me try to update this guy as well maybe we'll make him happy all right everything is looking good this time all the packages are updated pretty good now let's try to build the solution and build got succeeded pretty cool so now if I just go all the way to the folder explorer of the bin folder and debug folder netcore app and let's see there is something called as there is something called as test execution .json file in this build bin folder at the moment we only have the feature data .json file that we generated while we tried executing it last time but now if I try to build the uh, project or maybe run the test this time you can see that the test is currently executing it so now it has completed the test execution and if I go to the netcore app uh, this time and if I go to the test do you see there is something called as test execution .json file so this is a new one this time so this file is what is required for us to actually 
uh, use for our uh, for our uh, report generation with the test report uh, test result and things of that nature so I'm gonna open the terminal this time over here and if you go to the living document uh, uh, CLI uh, details that it that the team has uh, created so you can see that there is something called as living doc uh, using CLI tools so they have all the details like living doc test assembly of the assembly name so if you give the directly the assembly name of this particular project it will actually generate the the file for you the HTML file for you but it won't contain the uh, the the pass fail result in the step level basically but if you specify the hyphen T of this particular test execution dot JSON file then it will generate the test execution uh, result for you as well which is also pretty good uh, and then you can also specify the title if you want to like bookshop that's that's something for this particular guy you can do that and similarly you can also uh, generate the living documentation from the feature files level so you can directly specify the feature folder of the particular folder then it will also generate the feature file for you I mean it's up to you and you can also output to a different folder uh, path if you want to uh, and these are something like a work item prefix like you can specify for which work work item ID in Azure DevOps you're generating so they have this particular template as well so these are the things that is recently introduced by the team which is new uh, and we are gonna see how it actually works so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do this living doc and because we have installed the living doc in the global context of our machine uh, you can hype because we specified hyphen G which is global uh, that's why the living doc can be accessed from elsewhere. I mean from anywhere. So you can see that the once I hit enter it shows me all the details uh, And now I'm just going to use the living doc of the test assembly and the assembly name is actually our project name uh, with a DLL file Which is going to be the spec flow living doc dot DLL this guy and if I hit the enter just just the test assembly and if I hit enter you can see that it generated a HTML file for me and I'm just gonna go hit enter and you can see that it generates a, uh, a report for me but this is just a living documentation without even a single uh, result on that so you can see that there is no pass fail result or anything like that it's just a plain report but now if I want to actually hold my uh, hold my result as well uh, along with it you can specify the uh, hyphen T tag of the test execution which I was talking about so if I go all the way down to the test execution dot JSON and if I hit enter this time so you can see that I'm actually linking the test uh, assembly with the execution dot JSON file and now if I go to the bigger report and if I hit refresh you can see that now there is a whole new ball game so this this actually shows you a error message as well trying to fail forcibly which we gave last time and it tells you like pass and fail in the step level and why the particular uh, step like the next step which is not executed uh, uh, also like not executed due to the previous error so it gives you that tooltip uh, information it also gives you the time it has taken and all those details so this is really really cool I mean this gives you a more detailed information and there is one more tab which I was talking about the analytics tab it actually works if you specify the test result so basically this particular analytics works while it tells you all the details like what happens to the test report and all those failure details and everything comes in here which is pretty pretty cool I mean this is very helpful and handy while you connect with the Azure DevOps while you execute the same test multiple times then it will also show you the trend of the particular uh, test like how it's working fine or not things of that nature this is pretty cool and I think are you missing something in this particular box I'm gonna tell we need a dark theme for this particular report which is something I really really miss because if we have a dark theme support it will be awesome and this report looks pretty good to me and it has all the features that we are really looking for I guess that's it guys this is the new feature which team is introducing on the specflows living documentation one more thing before I forget I also can specify the title something like a, uh, a super good 
the report something like that so if i do that so you can see that now it is specflow uh, project hyphen underscore living doc which is always the assembly name but now this time it's like super good report something like that i mean you can specify that as well if you want to so these are all working fine and this is the new change which the team has introduced and i'm pretty excited to see this and we can probably talk about how we can integrate this report with the azure devops as well once again thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day